Mama, trust me, come see me. Dorothy's like, I ain't got time to go to church, baby. I don't have time. I mean, could I sell the pussy in the church? I'll go if I can sell it to the church. But if I can't, I, I don't know. That's a little much. Uh, you asking me to do too much, baby. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube and for a small monthly fee of $5. You babies, yes you, can be pretty privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about Rage to Survive, the Etta James story by Etta James and David Ricks, part two. Mama started taking me to the St. Paul Baptist Church on Naomi and 21st when I was still a toddler. I felt like I was born into that church. I loved it. Everyone loved our church. We had one of the biggest, baddest, hippest choirs anywhere, the Echoes of Eden. Our choir master, Professor James Earl Hines, was my first and heaviest musical mentor, the cat who taught me to sing. Fact is, I wanted to sing just like him. What's more, our minister, Reverend Bram, was one of the most flamboyant in the city. The man could preach. Now let me tell you about this chapter, okay? This chapter is where Etta James just started calling out the ministers for being gay, okay? I mean, she didn't hold nothing back in this. So I, everything in this book is telling me that this is going to be as good, if not better, than the Rickety James book. Because, you know, Rickety James ain't hold no punches when it comes down to all his dirt, okay? Etta James, within the first part, she was like, yeah, when I was a junkie. I'm like, junkie, bitch. You just telling us that information? She was easy with it, so too. So now she is easy with exposing the man who she looked up to vocally. Glittering gospel stars sang in our church. Sister Rosetta Tharp, the Sally Martin singers, Joe Adams, the DJ called the Mayor of Melody, broadcasted the services live every Sunday morning on KOWL. So now she moving on to the scandal. Yikes, okay. Ooh, I love it when people tell all their juice. So let me right. tell you something that happened one day at this church, okay? This grand church led by Professor Hines, okay? Now, the church was set up like all churches, right? But, you know, because they probably had money there, their pulpit, pit, you know, raised up out of the floor, okay? Now, you got the minister, Hines, you know... <laughs> Preaching, praising the Lord, singing, dancing, you know. But Etta James thought that maybe this time, Professor Hines, Reverend Hines, had uh, smoked one of them wacky sticks before he, you know, got down on the stage. Okay, because let me tell you what happened. Okay, they singing, they dancing. By the time the minister raises up to his full capacity, he swings around, the robe opens up, and what is that? It's his pickle. Is that the Reverend Hines pickle? Oh, uh -huh, that's his pickle. It's confusing because we will not have you expose your ding-dong to the congregation. Okay, not all at one time. Now, it may have you expose your ding-dong to the congregation, you know, privately, one at a time, but not all together. 
okay? That sounds like PCP to me. But she says that Professor Hines was married, acted gay as a goose, and I was crazy about him. In fact, I thought he was an angel. From the first row pew where me and my mama always sat, I'd look up at him and watch him spread his arms. His red robe flap flapping like great wings of a bird as he sang up a storm. He had one of those great classical gospel voices. Now every Tuesday, Mama would trot me over to Professor Hines for voice lessons. I also took piano lessons from his wife, but I wasn't much on practicing. Singing was the only thing that suited my impatient nature. What Professor Hines would tell young James Zetta, while she was there vocally being coached, was he noticed that when a, a, a note got too powerful, she would back away from it. Mm -mm. Etta, you grab that note, you conquer it, and you make it yours. He made her sing out and project her voice. So okay. you know now, because Professor Hines is um, teaching young Etta, he gave young Etta all the confidence that she needed to be able to stand up in front of the congregation next to him and belt out beautiful songs like Precious Lord. She said, while she's singing these songs, you got the congregation. Sing, child, sing. Yes, child, sing. Yes, glory, glory. How the mothers do in the church, okay? When they see something special, they encourage it, okay? Etta James eating it all up, okay? The minister, or the Professor Hines, knows exactly how powerful young Etta James is. Tell me this is not reminding us of the Aretha Franklin story, okay? But we're not going to bring that lady up right now. We're talking about Etta. After Reverend Brams and Professor Hines would have me stand next to them on the steps outside the church while the congregation filed past, patting me on my head, kissing me on my cheek, and hugging me to their bosoms. Mama beamed with pride. In the 40s, word got out that a girl child in the St. Paul Baptist Church could sing like a full-grown woman with grown-up feelings and strength. Joe Adams' radio broadcast helped spread the news, and it didn't take long before I got a little famous. I hear rumors that movie stars were sneaking in the back to listen. Orson Welles, Lana Turner, and Robert Mitchell. Now, Dorothy, that's her mama, okay, for all you that don't know, Dorothy would never come to the church, okay? Young Etta would be like, Mama, I'm telling you, I could sing. I got all these stars coming here to see me. Mama, trust me, come see me. Dorothy's like, I ain't got time to go to church, baby. I don't have time. I mean, could I sell the pussy in the church? i go if I can sell the pussy in the church. But if I can't, I I don't know, that's a little much, uh, you asking me to do too much, baby. So you know that Etta James is not living with Dorothy. Or she is, you know, from time to time, whenever Dorothy get in the mood to take care of her own child, right? But you know that uh, young Etta is living with Mama Lou, okay? That's who she considers her real mother to be, okay? She love her Aunt Cozy. She love her mama Dorothy. But when it comes down to who she depends on to nurture and raise her, it would be Mama Lou and her husband, okay? Mama Lou's husband is who Etta James considered to be daddy. Daddy also didn't mess around with the church until daddy found out how powerful his adopted, they weren't even adopted, but his, you know, pseudo daughter is, okay? Now, all of a sudden, daddy in the church at all times, okay? Because he want to make sure that his daughter is not being taken advantage of by Professor Hines and Dr. Bram or, you know, whatever. And on top of that, daddy did not like that uh, Mama Lou was so enthralled with the church. You know, men don't like them ministers, all right? Because they feel like, you know, when I'm not doing right, one of these days my wife's panties gonna drop in front of the minister. I mean, it happens, okay, Blink? It happens all the time. What's that dude from, Bar ask Jamal Bryant, okay? That nigga got babies everywhere. I love you, Jamal Bryant, okay? Well, no, I don't, I take it back. So, the fact that Papa, 
Mama Lou's husband, they call him Sarge, right? I think, I forgot they, what his other name is. So the fact that Mama Lou's husband, one, did not want his baby girl taken advantage of, and, you know, she thought it looked like old cash cow. Okay, and he don't like the fact that his wife runs around there to see that gay man preach in front of the congregation of women all the time. Okay, he don't like that. Now, wow. the pappy is dead. And he let the professor know, the head of the church know, look, my daughter ain't going to do this. My daughter ain't going to do that. If she is going to do this, you need to charge because my daughter ain't doing nothing for free, okay? And because Professor uh, Hines and Minister Brahms, they both are strong-willed men against another strong-willed man, they was like, look, okay, yeah, your daughter can sing. Yeah, she got the power, but you're not about to come around here and tell us what to do in our church. If you don't like how we run things, then you can take your daughter and go to another church. And that's exactly what happened. When the shiz got real political, I got real depressed. St. Paul was my second home, a place where I was wanted and appreciated. The old church made me feel special. It'll be the same in the new church, said Sarge, and he dragged me over to Reverend Chambers' congregation on 42nd and McKinley, a sanctuary even bigger than St. Paul. Etta James was so brokenhearted because you took her away from something that felt like her home that she didn't want to sing at all, okay? She like, okay, you got me here, Daddy, but I'm not singing, okay? You took me away from the place that I felt most comfortable, and you it up for everybody, Daddy. You did. Mama couldn't keep Dorothy away. And Mama was conflicted about it. Part of her wanted to make Dorothy disappear. She knew how Dorothy upset me, but another part of Mama realized that being my natural mother, Dorothy was entitled. The results were a series of strange interludes, bizarre breaks from my normal life, and sometimes the breaks were scary. Sometimes exciting. Now, let me tell you what tore my head up, okay? This is how we know that Dorothy is crazy, you know? Or she need a babysitter, all right? But what she would do is when Dorothy would snatch up at her, she would take her to these events at these different places while she was working. How you going to do that? How you going to have your baby in the car while you around there selling vagina, okay? Out the back room somewhere. But Dorothy does not have the uh, mental capacity to know that you cannot do this with a child. These are one of the moments that Etta James loved because when she was in a different club, she would hear different music, the type of music that she felt in her soul. Yeah, my mama over there, you know, eh, 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 but while I'm here, I'm learning, I'm growing. She took me along on her nocturnal rounds. Man, I'd be fascinated poking my head into the smoky clubs, the album, the turban lounge, the Clark Hotel bar, the Savoy ballroom, where everyone was hanging, grinding, drinking. Dorothy was known in all those places. Of course she's known because she's selling in the 40s. Central Avenue was popping. Music everywhere, bigger stars, bigger names in black show business were playing up and down the street. I might have been a little church girl singing gospel, but I loved all the music. I soaked it up like a sponge. Dorothy was always on the prowl, dropping names, switching lovers, slipping in and out of furnished rooms, living life on the run. For a while, she was going with Billy Eckstein's caddy. Okay, a cat she met through Uncle James. Now, Uncle James is Cozy's husband. Remember, I told you that um, Aunt Cozy, you know, she's selling her thing up and down the East Coast, you know, while Uncle James was uh, back somewhere uh, uh, making outfits for uh, Billy Eckstein. Dorothy really had her eye on Billy himself, but the caddy was as close as she could get. She also had the Jones for Herb Jeffries. Another time, Dorothy took me to go see Josephine Baker. Now, this right here pissed me off, okay? And you know what? I forget sometimes there was no restrictions on you going to the movies. Like, that PG-13 and the 17, you know, one up thing, that shit wasn't all the time. You could take your baby anywhere, anyway, okay? Anyway, to the point, okay? One time, Dorothy took 
young Etta James to see uh, Josephine Baker. Okay, I love her, love her. And I love my boo Lynn Whitfield portraying her, right? So what happened was Josephine Baker would throw her clothes as she took them off into the audience. Etta James got one of her shoes or caught one of her shoes. Do you know this fucking bitch grabbed the baby's arm and twisted the shoe out of her arm and Dorothy was standing right there? Dorothy, bitch, if you wouldn't have smacked that hole in the mouth with the shoe, you don't do that. Don't touch my baby. But the lady grabbed Etta's hand and twisted the shoe out of her hand. I'd be like, damn, bitch, what you about to do? Suck the shoe? You know, Dorothy old mover and a shaker. So she made it backstage to where Josephine Baker was, okay? Etta James said that she remembered that being one of the highlights of her life, Okay. Josephine Baker looked at her and was like, aren't you so cute? Etta James was like, I wish I could stay with her, but no, I'm stuck with this crazy bitch, Dorothy. Okay. I wanted to be a part of Dorothy's taste and style, but I wasn't. I couldn't count on her. She never had a word of praise. Praise wasn't part of Dorothy's makeup. She looked on me like I was a nuisance. I told you, her mama is crazy. I mean, the bitch is crazy. I was about 10 or 11 when I met Alex Hodge. Alex and his brother, Gaynell Hodge, could sing, along with Eugene Church, who'd become another close chum of mine. They formed the fellas and then the Turks. I was surrounded by talented boys, Richard, Eugene, Alex, Gaynell, but I do believe the most gifted of all was Jesse Belvin. He lived one block over on 32nd Street. Jesse was something else, the golden boy, everyone's idol. He was five or six years older than me and a legend in our neighborhood. Now we're in her preteen years, okay? She's saying that she is a pretty happy kid, okay? There's nothing in her life besides Dorothy coming in and out throwing her in a trick bag or whatever bag that Dorothy got going on, you know, this time. You know, she's saying that she lives a pretty good life, right? She got her parents, Mama Lou, and her husband, Sarge, they're taking care of her. You know, she has some pretty good friends that she sings with, mostly boys, or actually all boys, you know, and she feels real good. But after a while, Mama Lou started getting sick. She says that Mama Lou was strong in spirit, but weak in flesh. Okay, she said that Mama Lou suffered a series of strokes. Mama went through a whole series of strokes, which changed our relationship. She was still kind and loving, but she was also growing dependent on me. Every summer, Mama and I went to San Bernardino where Daddy had brought a house. He'd usually stay behind in LA to work. Sometimes her sister Ida came along, but it was usually just me and Mama. The summer when I was 12 was traumatic. Dorothy had moved to Northern California sometime before to be close to Uncle James and Aunt Cozy who were working San Francisco. Working! San Francisco. Meanwhile, in LA, Mama's health was deteriorating fast. The strokes were coming more rapidly, leaving her more debilitated. We went to San Bernardino for her to recover and relax, but it wasn't working that way. Mama was getting worse. I, I hate it when children are left to care for adults. You know, every time I watch Hoarders or My 600 Pound Life, I'd be like, damn, these people are wrong for putting these children in these positions to be caregivers, right? So that's kind of what happened with Etta and Mama Lou. They on this vacation, right, or a, a relaxation, okay, at the summer house. The only person that would help her care for Mama Lou would be Mama Lou's sister, Ida, okay? When Ida wasn't there, it would be mainly... Uh, Etta, James Etta. Uh, one time they're down at the summer house. Etta James' whole being is to be there to care for her mother, okay? She loves Mama Lou, but she's still a child. She still feels like she's trapped 
in this situation where she has to care for her mother. So one day when the doctor comes over to check on Mama Lou, the doctor says, hey, look, you know, your mom just went through a series of strokes, but, you know, she seems like she's getting better, okay? She could move and blink on one side, right? So it kind of relieved James Zetta a little bit. Mama Lou's sister said, go ahead, child, go on out. You, you deserve it. You've been taking care of your mama. Just take a break, okay? Etta says she remembers this day like it was yesterday, okay, or every day, right? She says she walked to a park that was close to the summer home, okay? She saw swings and trees and, uh, you know, just things that would make a child happy. She could see the children over there laughing, you know, she missed that. She hadn't had uh, too much interaction with children her age because her mama was sick. She was the main caregiver for her mother. So she's sitting there, torn, sitting on a swing, swinging back and forth, saying, you know, damn, I hate that this feels so good. I haven't felt fresh air and smelled fresh air and been outside for, for I don't know how long. She's like, I'm enjoying this. I miss this, okay? Suddenly, a car drives up beside her. Are you James Etta? Yes, ma'am. I need you to come with me. Uh-uh. My mama told me, don't get in the car with strangers. James Etta, your mama has Now, died. if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. Now, the same people that you meet on the way up will also be the same people that you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves. You babies, have a good one. Peace.